This uh, video is on the IMDG code. IMDG stands for the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. Uh, knowledge about this code is uh, important to mariners who are specially involved in the carriage of these dangerous goods at sea because dangerous goods can often, uh, not often, but sometimes due to the properties of their uh, goods, it can lead to a fire or uh, poisoning or asphyxiation or uh, corrosion or uh, explosion of some kind. So it's essential that if you are carrying uh, any kind of dangerous goods on ships, you should be referring to this code to get all the important information about that good, about the cargo, uh, so that you can uh, observe uh, precautions regarding it. All right, so I'll uh, start with the code and I'll tell you what are the essential aspects of the code and how to use the code to get the important information. So if you are not aware of it, then uh, the IMDG code is actually provided on all ships uh, that are required to be carrying the dangerous goods. If your ship is required to carry dangerous goods, make sure that you have a copy of the IMDG code. When I say copy of the IMDG code, I mean there are two words and a supplement. So since 2008, IMDG has two volumes and one supplement. Uh, before 2008, I don't know how many of you were selling before 2008, but before 2008, IMDG actually had four volumes and a supplement. But since 2008, and uh, they introduced uh, the CD version, and they introduced, and they they combined the four volumes into two volumes, uh, but they still have the supplement along with it. All right, I'll take you through each volume. Now, volume number one is uh, that uh, classifies uh, the IMDG goods. Now, if you are thinking about what is IMDG or what is dangerous goods, uh, dangerous goods are classified according to these nine classes that you see uh, on your screen. So we have uh, class one, which is explosives. Then we have flammable gases, flammable liquids, flammable solids, uh, oxidizing substances, poisonous substances, radioactive substances, corrosives, and class nine is your uh, miscellaneous category. So you have these different classes of dangerous goods, and each class also has subclasses. Uh, so, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that as well. So that's how they, the, uh, the International Maritime Dangerous Goods classification is carried out. All right, so when I say subclasses, so I mean that, uh, for example, uh, if you look at class four, it, it mainly talks about flammable solids, but then you have category or class 4.1, which talks about flammable solids that are self-reactive substances and solid desynthesized explosives. Class 4.2 is about substances liable to spontaneous combustion. And you have class 4.3, which are substances which in contact with water will emit flammable gases. So although class four overall talks about flammable solids, they also have subcategories. Similar subcategories are there in uh, class five, class three, um, class six, and so on. All right. Uh, and of course, you have those labels available. So if you are carrying any of the categories of those goods, you are supposed to be marking the container or the packaging uh, with these labels to clearly identify. Now that should be done from the shipper side, it should be done from the port side but you will go to many ports where they will not label the container properly or the packaging properly. Then you have to make sure that you are carrying labels on the ship and you should be labeling all the four sides, for example, of a container. Sometimes in some ports, they label only one side or the label has already come off and they have not noticed it. So you have to make sure that you label it on all sides. Now here is the uh, uh, details about the volumes and the supplements of the IMDG code. Now, volume one is not something that you really have to go into. Uh, of course, it talks about the general provisions, definition, training, the classification of goods is defined in volume one. So of course, if you have to learn about the classification of the dangerous goods, you have to go into volume one. But volume one, if you go through it, you will see that it's mainly for the shipper's perspective. It is mainly for the port or the shipper or the people who are involved in packaging and labeling of the goods. It is more from their perspective. From your perspective as a mariner, volume two is more important and i'll show you why because volume two basically provides you with the details of the cargo all the essential details that you need uh, for carrying these goods on your ship and i'll go into the details as well as i proceed with this presentation then we have supplement uh, the supplement section which is the third section uh, apart from the two volumes you have a separate document which is called the supplement volume 
and the supplement provides you with other important information and that also you have uh, you need to be very familiar with uh, so you need to get information about the emergency procedures uh, the medical first aid procedures the reporting procedures uh, use of pesticides on ships so all these kind of uh, important information is provided in the supplement as well so you have to be very familiar with how you use these goods so if you are a chief officer on a ship ideally or if you are a senior officer on a ship and you have been told that your ship will be carrying dangerous goods as soon as you receive information about it uh, the shipper will some document some shipping document and it will provide you with all the essential details as you would find in the volume 2 of the dangerous goods but you also have to confirm your own side as well as to whether you are able to uh, maintain the safety or the fire or the medical procedures from your side whether you have all the equipment or not so if you see here on your screen what you have is an extract from volume 2 the extract or the the volume that i say that you should be very familiar with so you can see here for every dangerous good uh, which has been uh, listed in order of their un number so if you see on the extreme left side column you have the column of un number which is your united nations number a number that has been designated to the particular dangerous good and uh, you can see them it's in increasing order of that so i think in the olden version we had them on uh, uh, alphabetical order if i'm not wrong maybe i'm wrong i'm not sure but i think in the older version the old version before 2008 it was uh, alphabetical order but then after that they have decided to uh, categorize it list it uh, in the order of the increasing un number uh, then you have the second thing you have the psn psn stands for proper shipping name so why the proper shipping name was designated is because uh, many shippers sometimes uh, maybe due to innocence or maybe due to negligence or sometimes uh, intentionally they try to ship uh, goods uh, dangerous goods uh, under normal goods and sometimes that has led to fire or explosion or incidents or poisoning or asphyxiation inhalation by by the crew and let them dying so to prevent that uh, the international maritime dangerous goods code the imdg code um, what they decided was they will very specifically describe the good so that the shipper has to ship it under its proper shipping name so that uh, they cannot take advantage because you see if you are send if you are shipping dangerous goods it requires additional packing and additional precautions additional handling measures and that for that the shipper has to pay more money so to avoid paying that money the shippers sometimes and i'm not saying they do it all the time or they do it intentionally sometimes even it's due to negligence or sometimes they are not unaware they are not aware about it so they have shipped uh, dangerous goods goods that are classified as dangerous goods with the normal goods which has led to incident so that's why a proper shipping name has been classified to all these dangerous goods then you have the class given to the goods as well so we, we discussed about the class just a couple of slides back and the class of the good is provided the subsidiary risk is defined the packing group uh, special provisions required limited quantities uh, then packing instructions then we go on to special packing provisions the international bulk carrier packing instruction special provision as well then you have the imo portable tank and bulk containers uh, provisions described as well so what if it is being shipped in a tank or what if it is uh, what is the provisions required then you have the codes given for your emergency schedule that is your ems so you can see the in the column the codes are as fasq or fasa now these are codes so you have to take these codes and go into the uh, supplement volume and then look under these codes and see what they stand for so they cannot uh, accommodate all the instructions in one page or in couple of pages uh, they struggle with that uh, it's too much of content so for that they have provided you with these codes and then you take these codes and go into the supplement volume and find out more information about the uh, cargo then you have the storage and segregation requirements provided as well so you can see the categories are provided and you can find out about the categories from class one of the dangerous goods code uh, then you have uh, some properties and observations these are something that you have to really be familiar with uh, why i say so is because when you are carrying these goods and especially if you are a chief officer who's responsible of uh, for carrying these goods you should be aware of these properties because some of these properties they like uh, like i described before some of these properties may come uh, they if when in when in contact with water they may emit flammable gases now if these flammable gases um they they catch fire they could be an incident or if uh, there is any kind of uh, um, poisonous substances poisonous gases being released and your crew inhales these gases maybe they are working near these goods they are not aware of it they are not wearing the face mask they will inhale these gases they might die 
or if some solids are self reactive substances or so they might be kept under the sun and because of the sun's heat they catch fire and explosion uh, takes place then you have to be very aware of the properties of the dangerous goods that you are carrying on the ship so that you can store them you can uh, at the right place at the designated place and, and maintain all precautions for crew safety and ship safety as well as cargo safety then uh, parts of the imdg code that uh, uh, that are needed when dealing with emergencies now i have talked mostly about all of it but uh, like i said volume 2 and supplement is the uh, the documents or the the publications that you have to be very familiar with uh, volume 1 of course volume 1 uh, like i told you before class contains uh, many important details but i in my in my opinion it is more from the shipper's perspective or the port's perspective for you guys as mariners you must study volume 2 and supplement very carefully especially the medical first aid guide uh, or the medical first aid procedures which are uh, described in the and that helps you to deal with the um, medical emergencies which may result due to the care uh, goods all right now in terms of uh, emergency information of course uh, once you get the cargo uh, un number you can go into volume 2 part 3 dg list check for the emergency schedule codes uh, and then check for the emergency schedule guide fire schedule spillage schedule so remember we had fasa or fasq in that f stands st stood for fire and s stands for spillage so when you have fa that is fire and then the category of what to do in a fire and then sa or sq in that the s stand stood for spillage schedule so what would you do if there was a spillage of the cargo how would you clean up would you require to wear mask would that cargo emit flammable vapors or poisonous vapors so these are some of the uh, things or the information that you need to get out of and publications all right um, now like i said emergency schedules and medical first aid guide is the one that you have to focus on when it comes to the supplement now emergency schedules are listed in column 15 of the dangerous goods list uh, as we saw before and two notations are used to indicate the emergency schedule against each un number so fire schedules are described from f a b c all the way to f j and spillage schedules are described all the way from s a s b s c all the way to s z or s z Uh, in terms of actual emergencies like i said the medical first aid guide is provided there is a flow chart that details the sequential action there are about 20 tables and 15 appendices that is there for uh, you uh, to assist you and it describes the various first aid procedures and what to be done if there is any kind of medical emergencies uh, resulting from this carriage of these tents So if you go into the medical first aid guide you will see there's a flow chart there's an emergency action there are 20 tables there depending on uh, what is the case on your ship uh, then you can carry out a diagnosis uh, and then if you can carry out the diagnosis then you can go ahead and treat it and if you can't then uh, further actions are described based on state of casualty where you might have to seek radio medical advice as well that is defined in the uh, radio in the medical first aid guide procedures then you have something called the material safety data sheets or msds now uh, i will say that uh, these days uh, sometimes they are called msd also they are called material safety data they are not called msds uh, they are called msd in some documents they are called msd in many places they are still called msds so that is why i have mentioned it as msds but uh, uh, i have heard and i have seen that in many places they call it msd now msds or msd is part of the shipping documentation which is associated with the carriage of the dangerous goods or hazardous goods and they are very valuable if you are planning for any kind of emergency or to deal or a tactical response to deal with an emergency incident as the sheets provide you with is the along with the cargo manifest they provide you with additional information about the cargo that you are carrying so for these hazardous goods the, the shipper should provide you with a material safety data sheet information or msd information and that will provide you with the details of the shipper the product name all the all the details that you can get of the imdg book you don't have to go into the imdg book then uh, also provides you with the manufacturer's code the physical description of the properties any special properties required any special precautions required what are the health hazards uh, that may be exposed uh, to the crew uh, if there is any kind of spillage or leakage or fire and all the details you can see the details are there Uh, it's kind of a summarized version of what you would be needing from the IMDG code uh, 
regarding the cargo that you're carrying on the ship. So this is a very useful document and that's why I thought I should mention it under the IMDG code that if you have this MSD, then uh, make sure that you study it, you highlight the important details and points and make sure you also educate your ship's crew uh, about the cargo and about this emergency or the special properties of the cargo. Uh, when you get the MSD or the MSDS, make sure that you read it. Uh, make sure that it's current. It's within a five-year validity period. It, it should be complete. Normally, it comprises of about uh, five pages. I think on an average about five pages. Make sure that all the five pages are complete. The details have been filled. Uh, make sure that it check uh, that you check that it is for the cargo that you are carrying. It's not incorrect or a wrong MSD has not been supplied to you. Uh, implement whatever it recommends. If it recommends anything uh, about carrying special medical equipment or firefighting equipment or personal protective equipment, make sure that it is there on the ship. If it is not there, then you should be ordering it and making sure it is there on the ship. Uh, do not use the substance for anything other than what is recommended. So if you are carrying any kind of protective equipment, cleaning equipment or uh, handling equipment, make sure you only carry it for that particular job, that particular uh, uh, task and not for any other task. Finally, uh, the last two slides, I'll just talk a little bit about the prevention of fire that involves uh, dangerous goods. So if you have the MSD sheets, uh, like I said, make sure that you consult it. Uh, keep combustibles away from all the ignition sources. So if you're carrying dangerous goods, make sure uh, any kind of combustible sources are kept away. If there is any lighting that they should be protected, it should be spark proof. Uh, there should be provision of adequate packing material for flammable substances. Make sure that you reject any kind of damaged or leaking packages. Uh, store the packages uh, so that they are protected from any kind of accidental heating or damage. They should not be exposed directly to the sun if they are self uh, igneous or self spontaneously ignited make sure that you carry or observe the segregation procedures from substances that if they come in contact with each other may lead to further trouble uh, and uh, make sure that you uh, ensure adequate access to fight or fire in case of an emergency uh, put up no smoking conditions and maintain it very strictly i have seen in some ports where the shore crew or the port crew are engaging in smoking uh, uh, even in areas where dangerous goods are being carried make sure that it is your ship and that you implement or police these actions very strictly do not allow anybody to smoke in these kind of compartments ensure that electrical cables and fittings are in good order uh, maintain the fire precautions as per individual substance schedule so like i said before go into the fire schedule into the emergency guide or emergency uh, schedule of the supplement volume and find out what fire precautions are required and follow it correctly. Ensure that appropriate protective clothing and firefighting equipment are at hand and ensure that crew members are having a good working knowledge of onboard dangerous goods emergency procedures. So, so like I said before, it is not only important that you become aware of the properties of the cargo and the actions to be taken, but you also have to train your crew. You also have to educate them. You have to make them aware because they will not be very conscious about the fact that the ship is carrying dangerous goods. They are not involved in all that procedures sometimes uh, and also many ships uh, these days, of course, they also have drills and trainings. Uh, regarding dangerous goods carriage on board. So make sure that you take these good drills and training seriously and use that time to educate your crew, remind them of the dangers that they are exposed to when such cargo is carried on board. Uh, for now, I think that's pretty much it. If I think of anything else that I have missed regarding IMDG code, or if you can think of something, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer it. All the best guys. Bye.